say The price of exposure just isn't enough to get paid You cry in the bathroom when I say your mid-rolls make viewers say bye Why so sad? Hello and welcome to Once More With Feeling a very special Ooh, episode. Special. <laughs> Second attempt. That's right, at recording doing Mark this. 2. Because the first attempt. Well, okay, going straight out the gate. We are covering the whole oh. implosion controversy over Channel Awesome. Um, it's a Russian yeah, conspiracy. We, that's 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 why I, I, at this point it has to be a Russian conspiracy. <laughs> Obviously, the Russians have come in. They've invaded just like Crimea. Obviously, that's what's going on. It's nobody's fault at all. No, no, not whatsoever. No, it must be the Russians. That that's my story, and I'm not sticking to it. <laughs> um, basically, we tried to do a recording once before, but. New information was coming through so Yeah, we quick recorded shot. this on Wednesday the what would that be? Wednesday the thirteenth? Wednesday the no, Wednesday the crap, the eleventh. Wednesday the eleventh. And when yeah. we sat down and we recorded this, they had just released um a basically a tiny statement is what they had released. Uh the channel awesome in response to all of the documentation and everything else that had been released by you know everybody else in the world so they had released a small little blurb and we're like oh that's kind of cute that kind of thing it wasn't really there had been a lot of channel like a lot of silence from channel awesome initially so we sat down we recorded this nice little blurb together it was about three and a half hours long many horrible things were said by us it was not exactly the most pleasant experience for either of us, so much so that my co-host here decided to uh, refer to himself as Sugar Tits for Eternity. So, as a result, <laughs> we were sitting down trying to think of how we were going to edit it, how we, how we were going to ship it out, all that kind of stuff. Was it going to be the gigantic episode, or were we going to break it down into just little chunks, that kind of thing. And then the rest of the world exploded. And now we're here. Yay! Now you're caught up. <laughs> Yeah, so first they released a double down on their previous statement, which was basically a, it was a victim blaming statement. Oh, but it was come a, on, it oh, wasn't a victim blaming on. statement. No, that couldn't have been what it was. They were just <laughs> doing accusation fact arguments like they were in court somehow, because apparently oh, we're in the people's court. Oh no! I'm, oh, I'm you're talking, talking about the about the, the little blurb. One. Oh yes, the little yeah. blurb. My bad. My bad. I'm jumping ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've been yeah. so excited. The, yeah, the little blurb. It was a victim blaming one that we could all go. Oh, it that's was. Cute. You know, like Channel Awesome is an organization that respects our product pro partners and strives to create the best possible environment for everyone. We welcome a diverse community of people joining together to create great videos for the people who have spoken out about past instances they deemed hurtful or unprofessional. We sincerely regret you felt that way. Our priority has always been to help content partners succeed and provide people a vehicle to follow their dreams. When the need arose, we have distanced ourselves from people like you who were particularly callous, letting go of significant stakeholders in the interest of keeping our mission, fucking you, at the forefront. That's, that's how it basically goes. I mean, there, there's more to it, but that's, yeah. that's good enough. After that, you had people doing reactions to that response. Um, Mars Girl specifically, she had a lot to say on it. Um, Mars Girl slash Kaylin Sorsetto. I listened to how she yeah. pronounced it, so I. Yeah, so some I of the names in this right. are um, difficult. Difficult. So, yeah. Yeah. So it's useful that she actually said her name. Um, but yeah. She was, I mean, she was the one to compile oh, the documents. Oh, she's the one who actually did. Oh, I did not know so, that. You learn something every day. Uh, uh, that's at least from my understanding. I might be understanding that wrong. I apologize to anyone who might listen to this 
if my information is incorrect. This is just what I'm understanding from the fact that she is the one to have written the opening and closing statement. Your channel statements. about to get deleted just because you did an in, 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 in factual statement. There you go. It's it's over. It's over. Music geekery is over because we made one slow, small, maybe incorrect statement when just trying to simply reference something. I'm very sorry. This was a good ride. It was a good run. I'm very sorry, folks. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, so... Ugh. Where to, where to go from here? Right. Okay, so I will... I am going to address their response because I want to go into a little bit about journalistic law because there are a few things in here which touch upon that but I'm also I also want to go into their most recent response because of the unfortunate fallout <laughs> I'll cross that bridge when I get to it but there has been some very unfortunate revelations and as a consequence painful fallout that has come about because Come of on, their Come on, this response. has been an amazing ride for everyone. How dare you say the fallout? There's no fallout. That would require there to have been a nuclear bomb dropped. That never happened. Oh, God. So where do you want to start? <laughs> okay, so the opening one. Uh, right, here's how they open up with their response. Since the posting of the not-so-awesome document on Monday, April 2nd, 2018, we have been exploring all of our options of how to address the lies that have been alleged by multiple disgruntled individuals with vindictive hey, hey, intentions. Hey. There's no way that was vindictive. There's no way. They didn't sit back and think to themselves, how could we destroy a channel that fucked us I mean, um, didn't fuck us over. Um, let's see. Uh, we didn't fuck them over. We we politely introduced them to a new media platform called The Street. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll go back to drinking my water. Channel Awesome has always tried to keep our dealings with our content partners out of the public eye, and despite any differences or disagreements, we have never publicly spoken negatively about any of them. But a response to the accusations leveled against yes, us there, must there happen. Yes, there must be a response. However, you never, ever, ever, ever do what's about to be done. I want to make this very clear. If there's anybody out there who thinks to themselves, Hold my beer. I'm going to make a response to a statement. Contact a PR rep for the love of fucking Christ. <laughs> just seriously, um, don't do what happens here. This is just so stupid. Continue. I will sit back and shut up again. Obviously, we cannot address all 73 pa plus pages of accusations against us in this forum, but we will address the most egregious now. Yeah, funny thing about that. They don't actually legitimately address most of the accusations. Well, they, they just stated they, stated they can't. They don't have, apparently, the time? I mean, in theory, they could. If they sat down, if they didn't just rush this out and had actually contacted a PR rep, a PR rep would have been like, DON'T DO ANYTHING! <laughs> if you make yeah. a statement, apologize, just just be like, our hearts, and, our hearts and minds go out to all of you. Do what Donald Trump basically is forced to do. Just... Eat your fucking hat for a while. Don't fucking do anything. But what do they do? They piss all over everybody. But they could theoretically have gone over all 73 pages and been like, Lies! Lies! Deceit! Lies! They could have done that. Thankfully, they didn't go over the entire document to do that, because that would have been fuel for so many libel lawsuits. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> if there's any proof that these people have, and you try to scream that they're damaging your reputation and, and basically calling them liars and whatnot and saying all kinds of really horrible crap, guess what happens? <laughs> so, in theory, this this opens them up to, in theory, lawsuits. I don't know if there will ever be a lawsuit over all of this, because it's up to the people involved if they feel like they've been wronged enough that there needs to be lawsuits. I don't know if, if there's enough, like, evidence, because obviously we can't see all ends. But it's, this is not what you do. This is absolutely not what you do. You don't pop up on your own channel and go, I response! And then respond with napalm. That's not what you do. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm going to, I am actually going to go over each of these accusation facts things that they did in the response. Because, 
out of journalistic integrity, which these fuckers really should have. If they are reviewers worth their salt, they should have the journalistic integrity to properly address this with a PR rep. Yeah, with that a would lawyer. be good too. Yeah. You would have thought they'd have the sense to get a lawyer to discuss how they Even can if it's a TV this. lawyer, just just somebody with at least a law degree of some kind. Yeah. Ugh, oh god. Yeah. So the opening one and ooh, 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 I'm ooh. Going... Can I read these? Can I read these? And then you do horrible things to the to the naughty people? You read them out and I'm okay, going to okay. address them. Accusation! Jane Doan accuses us of knowing of a sexual deviant for over a year! Page 66. Fact! The screenshot below clearly demonstrates the time elapsed from being made aware of the individual in question Name redacted for legal reasons And the time the content partner was released from Channel Awesome Three years, not over a year During the three week period we consulted a lawyer Oh, okay And waited to see if anyone would come directly to us as our knowledge of this was second hand it is obvious the person who came forward with this in the not-so-awesome document wants their name protected, so we will continue to do so. Okay, so this is the matter of them discussing dropping a particular content creator on the Friday of February 2013. Now, here's the thing. Firstly, we will address the matter of the Jane Doe they are discussing. It's not the Jane Oops. Doe in the document. This is a Oops. different woman. So, them saying that they knew about it for three weeks, not over a year. Now, firstly, we're going to address the fact that they're trying to argue about knowing about something for any period of time. It doesn't matter how long you knew about it. You knew about it, therefore you should have addressed it immediately. You are already culpable by virtue of not addressing the problem I'm also rather impressed that they said they consulted a lawyer, because that doesn't seem to be their MO in general, so I don't know if that legitimately yeah. happened or not, because if they, if they had mm. consulted a lawyer in that instance, there's no way they consulted a lawyer in this instance. So I, I'm having serious no. doubts that they consulted a lawyer in the first place. I have serious doubts of that. Mm. And there is the unfortunate matter of the fact that the name redactions have been yeah, shoddily done. It looks done. like they did a shitty version of paint is what they used. Yeah. If you look at the screenshot of the conversation dated the 2nd of the 12th, 2013, so for English and European speakers, that would be the 12th of February. Um, Robert R. Walker, did we want to drop blank on Friday? And if so, what time? Mike, early. Mike, 10 to 11-ish. Robert R. Walker, okay. I'll grab him tomorrow or Thursday. Here's the thing. If you look at the paint bit, you can tell what letter starts it. Oh, I, it's I, see, a J. What you're, I see what you're saying, yeah. That's that's a good job. That's a very good job. I want to hire this guy to go work for the FBI. <laughs> that's kind of reminiscent <laughs> so, of when, uh, yeah. Oops. <laughs> yeah. And Mars Girl has confirmed within the last couple of days she has recently confirmed that it was in fact Juario who is the one who got dropped. One of my friends said to me that it looks like it could have been him. I checked the dates and Reddit was exploding about it. Obviously you take anything on Reddit with a pinch of yeah, salt because it's, it's the Reddit. new 4chan. Or the old 4chan. <laughs> yeah. But because of the dates matching up, the shoddy editing, that initially made me think, yeah, it looks like it seems to be the case. And then Mars Girl confirmed it. See, this, this and... information here did not need to be given to the public in technicality. This is the kind of thing you would bring yeah. forward into a courtroom as your defense and yeah. let the judge decide and so on. Redactions would be done based upon lawyers and lawyers do a far better job apparently than these clowns. So... <clears throat> if you are ever involved in this kind of situation as a content creator, as 
a private citizen, what have you. Never, ever, ever fuck up redactions. The news media here in the United mm. States really, really dropped the ball doing this once. Um, not once, but many times. But the one I can remember, the wor- that was the worst by far. It was kind of along those lines. It was shortly after Jon Snowden uh, leaked all of the documents that he had uh, five-finger discounted from the United States government. He leaked them to the press right. and said, look, look through these and report on it. So I want the world to know what we've been doing to the rest of the world. Whether you agree with that or not, mm. the problem that really exists here, as far as what I'm trying to get at, is the way they redacted all the paperwork. Rather than redacting the information directly on the digital files, they printed them out and used black sharpie. And then we're showing them on air, and the problem is, you could see through the black sharpie and see the actual words that were written down on the page. And it allowed various organizations to know how they were being tracked via their cell phones. Whoops! And that's kind of what's happened here. If you don't redact correctly, people find out exactly what's being stated, and therein lies your problem. I appreciate you want to keep the integrity of the file, but let's be completely honest, people's lives are at stake. and You have to be careful. In this particular case, no one's hopefully going to get shot over this, but people's lives are still at stake. Be cautious with your redactions, yeah. please. Please. Um, the important thing here to address is whatever you might think. I know for a fact that plenty of people are going to be shocked about it. Um, Before I found out about this, I felt significantly angry when the whole I... Basically, Mike Michelle thought money could be made out of a memorial done for Chiwario, and I felt (sighs) I still feel angry about that because you're still trying to make money from and then someone's to top death. it all to top that to top that situation knowing that he was doing we're gonna gently use the you gently use the word being a predator we'll just we'll just use that because yeah. technically it's alleged because there's no official charges or anything like that but he's allegedly a predator you've now known about this obviously <laughs> and you guys kick him loose and then he commits suicide. Just a quick little editorial note here. We're not trying to make fun of suicide. We're not trying to make fun of the situation and the suffering that was caused both during this particular act or simply the act of suicide. So we want to make it very clear that that's not what we're trying to do here. Just thought, just interject that. And rather than going, yeah, we're going to put out just a simple message if you guys want to do things on your own. We don't want to be involved because of why we had to can him. Mm. <laughs> Instead, they're just like, la, 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 money, money. I want money. La, 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 la. No, no. Oh, God. No, no. It'd be like, okay, John Wayne Gacy was technically a decent person in the respect that, you know, he put on a good show as a clown. So... When he, you know, got arrested and was being put put on death row, it'd be like all the clowns out there going, well, he technically was a clown, so let's throw on our gear and go out there and hold a memorial for a fellow clown for money, because we all could use some more money. No, no, please don't. Just don't. Just just let yeah. people mourn. Like, I mean, I, mean his, I, I never watched his content. I have no idea what kind of content he did. Mm-hmm. But obviously he had a fan base, and I'm sure he still had friends who may not have known about his past, but at least they were friends. And that's fine, because technically the company cannot release information about what had happened. They can't talk about it because it's a legal issue. Yeah. So I understand why they didn't talk about it to their employees. They could just shit can him and be done with it. And they kind of did. Bravo, I guess. But don't turn around and then go, but we can make money on his death. That is that is so many levels of skis. Yeah. So many levels of skis. And Ugh. it's it's one of those you find yourself... Well, because of these revelations, of course, he had a family. So whatever you think about the situation, I implore whoever might be listening, leave the family alone. They're already having to deal with enough shit as it is. And it brings us to the next point we made many times last time we tried this and had it sadly crashed and burned. Don't make death threats. Yeah. I don't care who it is. Like, we'll just say John Wayne Gacy was still around walking and out there in the middle of the street. Mm. Don't make death threats. Don't make any kind of threats of any kind. Don't go to the person's house and do anything that would be considered a crime. Don't do anything like that. Be be adults. Don't do that. 
Let the law take its course. If the people who are involved in this would like to take this to a legal court, they can do so. Mm-hmm. Don't make a death threat. Don't do anything stupid, please. Yeah. For the love of all that is holy, don't do anything stupid. Yeah. Even Mike Michelle, where he's concerned, feel free to call him a prick. <laughs> Just don't make... You, you know, it's fine insulting people. You know, call him a prick. Don't make threats. Because that's assault. Yeah. Even over the internet, it's assault. And your IP can be tracked. And you can go away for that. I live on a small island where no one's got any control over. It's called America. We got freedom. I can make threats. No, you can't. Just don't do it. Don't no. do not do it. Yeah. Okay. So are you ready to move on to the next point? Or yeah. are, we, are we going to continue bashing this situation? I, I think we've covered that. Yeah, which sadly, this kind of, kind of just... It, this goes right back to the same scenario, sadly. Yeah. So here we go. Accusation, Sean Faust. Faust. I think Faust. Faust. Okay, Sean Faust. Sean Faust accuses former Channel Awesome COO and founder Michael Ellis of a conversation of sexual nature that lasted over two hours. Page 49 and 50. Fact! Michael Ellis resigned from the company and no contact from Michael Ellis was attempted after the conversation was reported to Michael Michaud with any termination involving a founder and shareholder legal separation must happen and this takes time and see so point the first they have in no way contradicted the accusation yeah, that's bad. Like, they're like, yeah, it happened. But we, it took us time to get rid of the fucker. Yeah. That's their defense. I love how that's their defense. It's not even that this didn't happen. We would not We would have been very offended if this had happened. It was like, yeah, it took forever for us to get rid of that fuck. That's basically what they say. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's an amazing defense. Like, I don't understand how you're refuting anything at that point. Mm. I mean, come on, man. It takes forever to get rid of a sexual predator these days. I mean, God. First, there's the paperwork. Then you have to go down to the build a new COO office. And then that takes forever because apparently they don't get produced like they used to. Now you have to outsource it to China. And then there's all this red tape because it's a Chinese COO. So then you have to go back over to Korea. But Korea now has that big annoying thing with the, like, the DMZ. So you can't, do, you can't do Korea anymore. So now instead you have to go to South Africa. But there's that racial riot that happened a couple years ago. So you can't do that anymore. So now you have to instead go over to like Tibet. And no one wants a Tibet. And COO because I've run out of reasons. I don't know. So that's kind of how they're acting. I just don't understand yeah, they, what this why even bring that up? I mean, he, that's damning rather than helpful. Yeah, I mean, he, this is the sort of statement where you're just, you're reading it and going for fuck's sake, lie! <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't two hours, it was one hour and 43 minutes. I mean, come on! How could you be offended at one hour and 43 minutes? Hell, it was complimentary. It was your weekly sexual assault complimentary case. <laughs> Jesus Christ. When you read things like that, you're just thinking, lie. Try to just lie. Well, to be fair, at least they're sticking to the truth. <laughs> at least their fact technically is correct. As far as we know. Once again, this is all just speculation. We have no idea because we are not involved directly with the channel in any way, shape, or form. But just looking at this, that was probably the most most factual thing they've said so far. Is that, yeah, it's a bitch and a half to fire your COO. <laughs> Alright, so have we beat that dead horse enough? Yeah. We can move on, or would you like to continue? I, I'm, All right. just, I'm baffled how they could use that as a defense it's sort of like well you basically admitted it it's sort of like okay let's proceed to um <clears throat> okay okay so guys so um i know you've never been a ceo before do you have any idea how hard it is to fire people especially when they're a founder man i can't do that i i don't even have the legal re- precedence first off i'd have to show up to work wearing pants that's the level of depression that is. All right, so we can move on to the next accusation. Accusation? Multiple content partners state payment for their contributions to the site were not compensated. Wait. What? 
I, I feel like that was poorly written. Multiple content partners state payment for their contributions to the site were not compensated. So wait, they paid the site and then they were not compensated? Is that what they're stating? Multiple content partners state payment for their contributions to the site were not compensated. When they say contributions, they're talking about their videos. Yeah, but payment for their contribution were not compensated. I, my brain is now melting. Trying to trying to understand, like I know what they're trying to say, but the way they phrase that states basically that yeah, when you paid the site with your contributions, we didn't compensate you. Okay. Yeah, they they fucked that. They <laughs> fucked it. They fucked the. They didn't even word the accusation right. I just caught that they too. Trying to do trying to do the bit voice. All right, so now that we've determined that they can't even make the accusation correct, let's see how their fact went. Fact. From the beginning of the site, anyone that has been added as a content partner was informed that ChannelAwesome.com was an aggregator for their content. At no time did Channel Awesome take a cut of the videos, as was the practice of MCNs or multi-channel networks. We never wanted to be an MCN and only asked them to schedule the videos that they already were doing for Blip TV and M... Or sorry, and not MTV, and YouTube. Got way ahead of myself mentally there. <sighs> we gave them access to over 30 million page views and over a million unique viewers at a month at our height. That's cool. Channel Awesome viewed the partnership as a way to help content partners grow their audience while bringing in new content and increasing their community within the site. Site, not stite. Further benefiting content partners, Channel Awesome covered all costs associated with the server, hosting and labor costs. I'm actually frothing at the mouth right now. Associated with maintenance and updates. Some content partners even had the servers for their own sites paid for by Channel Awesome. None of these costs were ever passed along to our content partners. That's how YouTube works, you fuck. Like, why are they acting like this is some big, cool thing they're doing? They're basically bitching about the fact that people have gone like, Yeah, I didn't make nearly the money I was supposed to make from posting on your site. They're bitching about the fact that it costs money to run a site. Like YouTube. Yeah. What the fuck? Good job, guys. I appreciate they're like, Do you know how much money it costs to have a server where people are watching your videos? We have like 30 million people a month. It's expensive. I mean, we're getting money off the ad revenue from the ads we're running on our site. Which, let me look real quick. Is there an ad on this page whatsoever? Even buried at the bottom. Oh my god, there's no ads on this page. They didn't make a dime for me looking at this. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, sorry, sorry, I'm getting off topic. But still, it's just, really, that's, that's your argument. Is you're bitching about the fact that running a site, any site, costs money. And that you paid all the costs because it's your website. And people are complaining because they didn't make the money that they believe they should have. That I'm sure that somewhere you probably said mm. in passing. I'm sure at some point it's like, yeah, if you come over to our site, we have like 30 million hits a month, you know, and people are making money. I'm betting you that's what you said or something of that nature. I'm guessing in your sales pitch for people to join your group. Because it's not an MCN. I understand that. But if you're going to try to pitch and you mention money anywhere, people are going to expect that money back. In some fashion. So, okay. Good job. Yeah, it's just... It's... It's complete bullshit. Yeah, it's... There's no two ways about it. That... That whole segment is bullshit. You cannot go, Well, we didn't want to run an MCN. Then why did you organize things like you planned to do that? Well, technically speaking... Actually, no, they, they actually do some shit very similar to it. Which, let me quickly skim. I want to skim real fast. Did anybody mention... No, okay, they, they don't try to dispute what I'm about to say. Because I wanted to make sure... Yeah, okay. When a channel that you sign up with and work alongside can control how many ads you're allowed to put on your videos. And whether or not you mention mm. Patreon. Those kinds of things. That enters the realms of an MCN. Yeah. Like, for instance, if me and Edmund here decided to co-found a channel and call it... Uh, giant fuzzy fezzle wig, uh, punching penises, dancing bears. And on our channel, we invite 17 other people. And everybody who puts up a video on that channel 
or in basically even in the network, but we'll just say there's an individual channel. And everybody who puts a video on there has to have 15 ads on the channel to pay for it. One at the beginning, 13 in the middle, one at the end. A ridiculous number of ads. That's mm. basically what the MCNs can do. They can control how many, of ad, how many ads are on your video, whether it's one, none, three, whatever. They can also dictate that you cannot use Patreon. Now, most of them don't because they're smart enough to realize get stale the fuck out of that. But yeah. some of them, I'm sure, do have that in their claws. So when you basically go to your people and go, you cannot run mid-run mid ads. You cannot do a mid-run ad. You can only have an ad at the beginning. One. That's it. You don't make enough money off that one ad, make more work. That's kind of douchey. And that's part of the MCN concept. If you say you may not run Patreon, no Patreon at all, that once again falls under what people consider part of the MCN practice. So yeah, you may not be taking a cut of their videos, but instead what you're doing is you're limiting what they can do to make money off of their videos under your flag. That's the symbolism of an MCN in some form or another without the perks of being part of an MCN. Mm because an MCN actively attempts to market you. That's one of the main reasons to join an MCN is they go, don't worry, bro, I got your marketing. I will make sure that you have plenty of viewership. That's what an MCN is supposed to do. Then you guys didn't even do that. Instead, you shit all over your content creators. Mm. And so ends episode one of a four part mini series on channel Not So Awesome. Thank you for watching, and thank you once again to Mars Girl for her wonderful song. We'll see you next time. Take care, and for the love of God, don't do what these idiots did. Bye bye!